As a finance professional in a disrupted business landscape, what does it take to be in demand? What does it take to attract great paying international roles? If you're an ICANN member, it'll just take one exam. That's all it takes to complete the globally recognized SEMA professional qualification and the internationally in respected CGMA designation. As a SEMA member and a CGMA designation holder, employers will look at you as a finance professional, constantly acquiring new skills to add value to the business. That's why they'll be willing to pay premium to hire and retain you. If you have five years of relevant experience and are an ICANN member, you can directly sit for the final exam of the SEMA professional qualification, the strategic case study exam. Start studying the SEMA professional qualification. Prepare to make an impact. Live as if you were to die tomorrow and learn as if you were to live forever. And with this admonition quote from the reverse sage, Mahama Gandhi, I welcome you especially to another episode of Haikan on Air, a great platform for learning, powered by our Noble Institute, the Institute of Credit Accountant of Nigeria. I'm your host for today, Tosin Akimomi. And as you all know, this is the last episode in the month of August 2023. Please inform your friends and colleagues that the show has started and you can be part of this show icon on air on all icon social media handles, the Facebook page, Instagram handle, and icon YouTube channel. And today, Thursday, the 31st day in the month of August, we shall be considering another topic, emerging issues in professional practice. And I have here with me a distinguished professional an erudite practitioner, a member of the Governing Council of Haikan, in person of Mr. Jude Sonny Hegbo, FCA MNI, who shall be providing insight on this chosen topic. Tell your friends, start coming in and sending in your questions because Mr. Jude is on ground to provide responses to your questions. I'll quickly go on the commercial break. And when I'm back, I'll be back with my guests for today and we shall be discussing the topic for today. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. And like I did promise, I have my guest in the house, Mr. Jude Sonny Hebo, MNI FCA. I'm a powerful boss. You're welcome to the show, sir. You are muted. You are you are muted, boss. You welcome to the show, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Tosin. It's my pleasure to be on your show. 
Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you around today, sir. And quickly, let me take the uh, brief profile of Mr. Jude Sonny Hebo, MNI FCA. Mr. Jude Sonny Hebo, FCA, is a resourceful chartered accountant in practice. He's a brilliant and vibrant fellow of our great institute. JSA, as is fondly called by his family, friends, and fans, is a managing partner of Egbo, J and Co. Chartered Accountant, a dynamic firm of chartered accountant with headquarters in Enugu. He's also the managing consultant at CMCT Consulting Limited. He has garnered vast specialist knowledge and experience in auditing, accounting, taxation, and consulting in a professional practice career spanning almost 20 years and has led or participated in numerous top-tier audit assurance, forensic, and tax engagement across the nation, all with excellent results. GIC is a selfless, independent-minded, courageous, yet very humble leader who derives immense joy and satisfaction from serving our renowned institutes, our nation, and humanity in general. His leadership journey in ICANN began at Enugu and Society, where he served with distinction as a PRO between 2012 and 2013, and later as the vice chairman of the same district. He concurrently served as the chairman of that district and hold his stand zona district of Haikan. By the grace of God and God's will of Haikan members, JSC was elected to Haikan Governing Council in 2017 and graciously re elected in 2020 and 2023. His membership of Haikan Council has enabled him to successfully push for increased delegation to these societies and prioritization of member member centric policies. He currently serves as the chairman of the Regional Practice Committee and the newly established Communication and Public Relations Committee. In addition to membership of many ad hoc and standing committees of the institute, he sat on the board of the Enugu State Internal Revenue Service between 2016 and May 2013. He is a distinguished member of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies in Kuru and a patron of Enugu and this society and the Eastern Zonal District. He has a very loving family, and his hobbies include music, watching sports, current affairs, and traveling. Distinguished colleagues, and that is the average profile of our guest on the show today. Once again, sir, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you very much, Tosin. It's my pleasure to be here. And I also join you in welcoming our, our, our the audience, our distinguished audience from all over the world. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And today, welcome, like we did sir. say, thank you. Uh, thank you for me. And today, like we did say, the topic before us today is emerging issues in professional practice. Of course, many ICANN members are in professional practice, and I'm sure they are glued to the screen now to exactly see what will come out of this. They want to learn. They are ready to get what are those emerging issues that is to be mentioned and to be shared, especially by the chairman of that committee, in person of Mr. Jude Sonny Hebo, MNI FCA. So uh, let's start this way. And I also implore our guests on the show, to our fans rather, and audience, to be sending in their questions because Mr. Jude is on seat to avail responses to those questions. So let's kick off this way, sir. Professional integrity sounds simple, but it's not easy to attain or achieve because a lot of hard work and diligence is required. And as professionals, having you on the guest today will give our global viewers the opportunity to learn and share from your depth of knowledge, skills, and experience. Sir, what is professionalism? And who can we say qualifies to be called a professional? OK, thank you very much, Tosin. I once again appreciate uh, the good job you're doing for our institute, together with the entire ICANN on Air team. Um, in a nutshell, professionalism is expertise. To the lay people on the street, professionalism entails expertise, meaning that to become a professional, one must have undergone some level of training by a recognized organization or institute like ICANN, you know, based on some set standards which will qualify that person to be 
to answer that, that appellate professional. It is different from coming out from the street to do any job or to function in any capacity. For you to hold yourself out as a professional means that you've gone through a regulated training by a licensed or recognized organization or institute, and you can now hold yourself out as duly qualified to practice that profession. For instance, I can, uh, accountancy is a profession, and for you to answer a professional in Nigeria, you must belong to the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, or the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria. Fortunately, we belong to ICANN, and that training we received as chartered accountants, you know, made us confident to hold ourselves out as duly trained and qualified to serve the public as accounting professionals. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to, to have you here. So, you know, um, in order to appreciate today's um, discourse, and um, because we have global audience, um, we'll be happy to keep following you into the classroom because I see this as a classroom. You are in charge of um, the departments in which this topic is quite relevant. So what is professional practice all about um, in your opinion and using practical examples, sir, can you run us through the key element of the professional practice itself, sir? Okay, thank you very much. In the Institute, the Council of the Institute governs every activities of ICANN, but the Council functions through committees. Okay, so the, the, the committee that I have the privilege of leading is the Professional Practice Committee. And our activities cover essentially everything that has to do with regulation of practice attachment. Practice attachment is the modern name for articleship. When members want to train to become chartered accountants, they are expected to acquire some level of training that distinguishes them as professionals. So, at, in the professional practice committee, our job includes regulating the, you know, advising the institute, the council of the institute on the level of training those members should undergo to be qualified to acquire the practice license of the institute. At the professional practice committee level two, we also um, license fresh practitioners. When you've gone through your period of training, presently 36 months, it used to be 30 months, but because the, the International Accounting Education Standards Board keeps improving the process, and ICANN by membership of its, uh, its membership of IFAC also aligns with all those uh, international standards, it's presently 36 months. So when you've done your 36 months of training in an ICANN recognized firm, we call it ICANN registered firm. When you've done those 36 months, you are now qualified to approach the institute to apply for your own practice license in your own name. Okay, so at professional practice committee level, it is our job to assess your level of competence, to assess your experience, to really check and advise the council or make recommendations to the council as to your qualification for that license or not. Some people will train for 36 months and go for that assessment of experience, and some majority will pass, some will not pass, some will be returned for additional 36 months of training. So it's the professional practice committee that does that work for the Council of the Institute. Also, the professional practice committee does the practice monitoring and review of firms and members in practice. You know, there are two levels of review. One is the review of members in practice, people like myself that is in practice in my own name. And then there is the, the firm level review, the firm of chartered accountants, where you may have a partner or 10 partners or 20 partners, as the case may be. The, you know, the professional practice committee monitors the, you know, the 
the, the work those firms do and advises the council on whether to renew their licenses or to cancel those licenses. We've had instances where members were reviewed, their firms were reviewed, and we found them wanting and advised the council accordingly, and the council took its decision. It's also the work of the Professional Practice Committee to you know, monitor and supervise merger and acquisition of firms and all that sundry services like change of names of firms. You know, we have the, the, the guidelines, the requirements, all the processes you pass through to ensure that your name does not conflict with the name of any other member in practice. Once you've met all the established uh, guidelines, the names, the committee will now make recommendation to the council of the institute either to approve such names or the committee will write to the applicants to advise them on, on the corrections to make for the applications to be successful. So those are basically what we do at the uh, professional practice committee uh, level of the institute. Thank you. Thank you very much, my distinguished, for highlighting those uh, scope of work uh, that your committee work on. And of course, we can see that it's a great work the committee is actually doing. And now the theme for today, or the topic for today, is emerging issues in professional practice. So I will go straight into that. So if I may ask, sir, what are some of the emerging issues in professional practice? Can you share some development in this regard, sir? Thank you very much, my brother. That's why we're here, to share you know, our insight. And uh, by so doing, keep our members you know, at risk of developments globally, nationally, and even institute-wide. So I'd like to take the, the emerging issues you know, in three parts. Number one are the global developments that our members need to be aware of. For instance, you have at the global level, the adoption of the International Standards on Quality Management one. Last year, the global accounting profession switched over from International Standards on Quality Control one to International Standards on Quality Management one, December 15 precisely. So it's still very topical, it's still very relevant, and it's current and significant. It affects all members in practice, not just in Nigeria, but globally. That is one of the, the topmost you know, uh, current issues. Another one is the review of the International Standards on Accounting, number 220, okay, which has you know, enhanced the responsibilities of auditors you know, to ensure that auditors play to their highest strength in serving the, the public. You know, our profession is uh, relied on by humanity, you know, to render opinion on and to provide assurance on the level of re reliability of financial statements. So that International Standards on Auditing 220 was revised to, you know, enhance the responsibilities of auditors. It's a global trend and it's still very current and relevant. Another one is the revised changes to the International Standards of, on Auditing 240, which addresses the concerns of auditors, or addresses the concerns of financial statement users about the auditors doing enough to you know, uh, detect fraud. Okay? When we were training, we were told that auditors are not watch dogs, we are not you know, bloodhounds, it's not our responsibility to detect fraud and things like that. But the current dynamics in the profession, okay, has clearly, you know, pushed some additional responsibilities to auditors, members in practice globally, you know, to, to say that you have additional responsibilities towards the detection of fraud and to give additional assurance to users of financial statements that those financial statements are reasonably free from fraud and other irregularities. Coming to the national level, there are a whole lot of um, issues that are very current and you know, relevant. Number one of them is the Financial Reporting Council Amendment Act of 2023, just this year. That act was signed last month. The act has empowered the Financial Reporting Council to 
do a whole lot of things which it could only dream of before the act, the amendment act came on board. And every member in practice should be aware of that. Every member of every member in practice should be aware of that development. The, 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 the powers of the Financial Reporting Council, which coincidentally was given birth to and nurtured for a very long time by our institute, has been enhanced, you know, to the extent that the Financial Reporting Council can no longer just back, but can bite significantly. So it's in the interest of all practitioners to get a copy of that amendment act, study it, and, you know, align accordingly. Also, just recently, uh, uh, in the first week of July, the Institute signed a delegation agreement with the Financial Reporting Council. We've been on it for a while, trying to, you know, iron out all the gray areas and, you know, agree on, on responsibilities of the, two, of, of the two parties. But that agreement was signed last month. That delegation agreement empowers the Institute Okay, to function on behalf of the Financial Reporting Council, especially with regards to monitoring and reviewing the work of our members. Okay, so uh, sometime in about two weeks ago or so, there was this rumor about the institute and its firms registered, firms registered by ICANN and licensed by ICANN being reviewed or monitored by our sister professional body. That is not the case and it's not true. We signed that delegation agreement even before our sister professional body to give our members the comfort that it's your institute that will come to review your activities. It's your institute that will come to review even you as a member in practice. It's an imagined issue that we all need to be, you know, members in practice and even the majority of our members should be, you know, abreast of. Another issue which is not too current, but it's still relevant because some of our members are, are yet to key in and you know, understand what it entails, is the audit regulation 2020. That regulation has been, you know, has been on for about three years now, and we still, get we still get issues, we get queries from our members at the professional practice committee level relating to that, uh, to that regulation. So if you are an auditor in practice, in fact, if you are an ICANN member, if you're a chartered accountant, you need to take that audit regulation 2020 and study it. Because even if you're not in practice today, you not, nothing says that you cannot be in practice tomorrow. Moreover, most members of the public do not even know the difference between members in practice and just chartered accountants generally. So you may still need it to uh, be able to talk to our people, your friends, your family members, and provide uh, information that is very relevant to them. Then at the ICANN level, at our institute level, there are a whole lot of developments. The first one I would like to point out is the new regulation on practice attachment. Before now, what we've witnessed at the professional practice committee level is that people, you know, will train themselves at their pace, unsupervised by the institute, the institute may not even be aware. The institute may just be aware that they are members of ICANN, but when they began their training, will be unknown to the institute. When they concluded it, will be unknown to the institute. Only for them now to approach the institute when they want to apply for practice license. That scenario has changed. It will no longer happen. As far back as three, four years ago, the Council of the Institute made a regulation which says that for you to apply for practice license of the institute, for you to apply as a fresh practice license applicant, you need to have applied to the institute for your training, meaning that, in essence, you cannot apply for graduation from the institute without having applied for matriculation. So right now, if you want to practice, you're interested in practicing as a member of ICANN, what you need to do is to first and foremost apply for your training to be monitored. Our practice uh, attachment is automatic that you have to apply with the Institute for 36 months and your training will be monitored. We have the processes to check where you're training, check the person training you, check 
even the quality of the work you're doing, to be able to assure ourselves that this person is fit and proper to hold the practice license of the Institute. It's a key development because members are still not in tune with it. Members still, some members still come, you know, come up to apply for practice license without the Institute having any record whatsoever about their practice attachment or practice training. So it's a key development that members need to be aware of. Another one is the, the Council of the Institute, especially in this presidential year, we call this year the year of uh, ICANN's new and upward trajectory. We are fortunate to be blessed with a president that is very, very passionate about professional practice. He's exposed, he has seen it all, where he lives, where he, where he has worked, and the experience is coming to bear, not just for members in practice, but for all chartered accountants, because it's in our collective interest to ensure that members who hold themselves out as being in public practice are truly what the license they hold. So this presidential year, the Institute has set off its practice monitoring and review processes. Presently, it's a key requirement, even for the renewal of existing practice licenses, not just for those applying afresh. If you want to renew your practice license, please know that it is automatic. It's the right of the Institute to monitor, to inspect, to review what you've been doing in the past, to be able to, you know, to have that assurance that you're truly in practice and that you're not quack or that you're not a charlatan, even though an ICANN member. Okay, so it's a key development. We've had some concerns from members about those other things, which I know or I believe we may still touch as we go along in this, uh, in this program. Another key development relating to uh, professional practice is the council's approval for the list of approved members in practice to be hosted on the ICANN website on a monthly basis. It has not happened before but the council has approved it. Every month at a specified PA date, the Secretariat of the Institute will put up for public view list of ICANN members in practice, their names, their firms where they are, they are working, and their addresses. So that even people, even members who are not in practice can also help us in checking those with false claims about being in practice. We've had instances where members uh, who, be, you know, are fellows or who feel, you know, that they are old enough in the Institute to, to have whatever they, they want, apply for the practice license of the Institute. Meanwhile, our law says that you have to be in practice full time. There is nothing like part time practice in ICANN. So when that list is put up on the website and you see any member that is not in practice full time, you know, the name being there, being on that list, it is your, it is the expectation of the Council of the Institute that you will report. We have a channel through which we pick feedback from our members, okay? And once the Institute gets that report, we investigate it, we verify it, we audit us, and we bring a stop to those kind of practices and even go forward to sanction uh, those defaulters, okay? And similarly, just recently, the, the Council of the Institute also approved the, you know, for members to make annual returns to the Institute. What we've had in the past is members just practicing, you know, practicing on their own without returning, uh, making any return or any report to anybody, except when the Institute comes to visit or comes to inspect their practices. That is not going to continue. From January 2024, by the grace of God, even before that period, all the processes are already in place. All members of in practice in ICANN will have to do their returns, annual returns to the Institute, so that the Institute will have the relevant data with which to plan, with which to monitor, with which to review, and with which to even relate with our regulators, uh, the, like the Financial Reporting Council and other interested stakeholders of the Institute. So those are the few emerging issues which uh, the Institute you know, thinks it's right that we bring to the attention of all our members, whether in practice or not. 
to make Thank communication you. easier. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, those are not few emerging issues. I hear yeah, lots of yeah, emerging no, issues, yeah, no. <laughs> and they're quite relevant to all our members. So um, I can see a lot of members being here. Please get ready um, for your questions. We would like to go on a break, and we'll be right back with our special guest here on emerging issues in the professional practice. So we'll be right back. Tax from man, pay your tax online. That is the easiest way, yeah, to pay your tax. Companies in contact, value added tax. Session education tax, pay with tax from man. For results when due, pay your tax correctly. And get your e tax clearance. Pay your tax online. My better people for Bodo Nigeria. I don't bring better information don't give now. To pay your tax now, eh? You don't do easy like ABCD. With this new Obonga platform where the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, don't bring come. Then they call them tax promax. With this one, now for your house or office, you could also pay your tax. And if you want to pay your tax, make you log into www.taxpromax.firs.gov.ng. This message, now the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, they bring them for now. Pay your tax online. Security is key to national development and growth. No nation can be truly economically successful without peace and stability or when its security is threatened. This is why we must perform our civic obligation of duly paying our taxes so as to provide the needed resources for government to secure our lives and properties. When we pay our taxes, government is provided with the needed resources to equip our security agencies for a safer Nigeria. The money we pay as taxes is used to purchase equipment and hardware, invest in intelligence and other sophisticated technology, as well as cater for the welfare of all security personnel. A secure nation is a prosperous nation. Nigeria is safer when we pay our taxes. FIRS. It pays to pay your tax. You welcome on break. We welcome you back to Icon on Air. And if you are just joining us on this program, we are on Icon on Air. And today we are looking at emerging issues in professional practice. And uh, the chairman of that committee, uh, Professional Practice Monitoring Committee, in person of Mr. Jude Sonny Hegbo, MNIFCA, has been doing justice to the questions in the area of emerging issues in professional practice. They send in your questions, we'll take them so that uh, the chairman on seat will certainly and definitely respond to those questions. Afumi, I know you have your question yes, for Mr. Yes. Jude. I actually want to recognize the presence of some of our members. Um, I see Akira Day from Manchester, United, UK. Thank you for being here. Other members are here from Enugu, from Lagos, from Ibado. Thank you so much for being here. As much as uh, we don't have so much time for all of the emerging issues within um, that the Institute has um, brought on board, but of course we'll have to attend to some of these questions. But particularly from me, I would like to to ask you, sir, um, I can recently actually signed a delegation agreement um, with FRCN to review practitioners, um, to review practitioners. So my question is, can you explain to us what this agreement means for our members? And um, our members will also like to um, understand how the Institute is, how they intend to monitor its licensed professional firms in ensuring that the quality and the ethical um, services are delivered to clients and for the interest of the public trust. So if you can help us out here, sir. Thank you very much for me for that uh, loaded question. I, I touched on it briefly, you know, while discussing the emerging issues. I thought, touched on the delegation agreement, which our great institute signed with the Financial Reporting Council several weeks back. Okay, the essence of that delegation agreement is for the Institute to act 
instead of the Financial Reporting Council, the Financial Reporting Council, which is now empowered by law to regulate not just chartered accountants, but all other relevant uh, financial uh, professionals, you know, those that have input to make in financial statements, okay, has, in its wisdom, rightfully delegated the monitoring and supervision of all ICANN members in practice to ICANN. So what it means is that the Financial Reporting Council on its own will not come to check what ICANN members are doing, except there is any reason to doubt the quality of the services being provided by the Institute. Similarly, no other professional accountancy organization will come to check the work or review the work of an ICANN member in practice. It will not happen because the Financial Reporting Council, who has that statutory right, has delegated it to ICANN. And the essence is to ensure that charlatans, you know, quacks, and all those other people that people that are not really in practice or legally in practice, but hold themselves out as being in practice, thereby deceiving the, the public, that they are chased out of out of the the, the that professional practice space. Okay, I can has the skill. I can, like I said earlier, I can form the in the 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 father of financial reporting council. That is the Nigerian Accounting Standards Board. So we've always been known for quality. What gave rise to that delegation agreement is for the Financial Reporting Council, which we all know cannot, you know, doesn't have the capacity to supervise all manner of firms in practicing in Nigeria, you know, to co-opt ICANN in that onerous and very important service to our nation. While Financial Reporting Council will now, you know, decide on the areas to pay attention or to give priority. The key essence is to ensure that public interest entities whose activities will have very significant impact on the Nigerian economy are well monitored, are well regulated, and are well, you know, they are well monitored to ensure that uh, the, our economy is safe. That is the whole essence of the delegation agreement. You know, it's like a partnership between the Financial Reporting Council and the Institute. I'm, I'm made to know that the, the Financial Reporting Council also has that kind of uh, agreement with our sister professional body, but they too will check and review the activities you know, of their own members. I can we not have, you know, I can we not go to, to check or monitor the activities of our sister professional body, except there is reason, you know, for the Financial Reporting Council to suspect foul play, which we, they will now override any of the two professional uh, accountancy organizations recognized by law in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much for that sourcing response. Uh, what I did pick is that ICANN stands for quality, and that quality we hold no at every point in time. As uh, uh, members often complain about the delays witnessed in the issuance of practice license, as well as in the renewal process. Uh, so, uh, can you explain to us why this appears to be the case? And what is the Institute doing about this? And do you have any advice for members to make the process more efficient or seamless as it could be? Okay, so, so see, I, I am very pleased to announce to you that, you know, we've gone past that stage, you know, about two, about three years ago, what used to happen is that members will apply for the renewal of their practice licenses manually and from experience, because by the grace of God, I've had the privilege of serving in this committee for upwards of 10 years now, even before coming to the Council of the Institute, you know, by the goodwill of our members. So what we've witnessed, we've always witnessed about up to about three years ago was, you know, situation a situation where members who are not even qualified to apply for the renewal of their practice licenses, do so. Once they do a mail, they push it forward to the Institute, they won't check whether they are financially up to date, which is a key requirement. In fact, the requirement number one, you need to prove that you even belong to the Institute. You are you know, fulfilling your obligations to your Institute. 
which is financial membership. The second one is the uh, uh, mandatory con continuing professional development uh, expectation. The Institute has an expectation from all members because our skills are not dormant. They are supposed to, you know, to be improved as we go along in line with the dynamics of the time. But you discover that some members who are MCPD deficient will still apply for practice license. Some others that are also not members of any district society, any ICANN district society, will apply for ICANN practice, uh, for their practice licenses to be renewed. And once they do the application, they will send it to the institute. The secretariat will now sift through these applications and do responses to them, saying, sir or ma, this application cannot proceed for so, 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 and so reasons. But members will hardly listen to those uh, uh, follow-up mails. They will, you know, begin to raise alarm. They will begin to complain that I've applied for my practice license renewal for the past two years, and it is still hanging. What is the ICANN Council doing? What is going on with our institute? This is not what it used to be, okay? And because of those complaints, the institute, now to improve the system, like you asked in your question, automated the process. As I speak to you, your any practice, any uh, application for practice license renewal cannot come to ICANN unless you are financially up to date, unless your MCPD uh, requirements have been met, unless you belong to a district society and we've received com confirmation from your chairman that you truly belong to a district society and you are meeting your obligations at that district level and other requirements. Once those processes have been met, your application will sell through automatically. And what we've noticed is that we, it takes us between two to three weeks maximum to sort out other issues relating to checking further on those submissions made by members or even the, 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 the confirmations or approval by the district society. We know that we are still human beings and we run a human society. So we still try to do our own independence check, which can easily be confirmed by our members because we have members scattered all over Nigeria who we normally rely on to give us information independent of whatever we've received from district society chairman, okay? Once we've done those checks and confirmed that those members are truly in practice and that they've met all the requirements, these days, it takes less than two weeks. When we started about three years ago, we were hovering between two weeks and three weeks. But these days, it takes less than two weeks. And the mandate we have from the governing council for this presidential year is that our practice license renewal should not take more than one week. But depending on members, you know, uh, 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 members being accessible for review, because practice monitoring or review is now a condition precedent for you to renew your practice license. So once you know that your license is about expiring three months to the expiration date, please apply to the institute and the process will begin so that even before the expiration date, your practice license, the new or renewed practice license will be ready and waiting for you, okay? So that is what we do presently, and that has reduced the complaints very significantly. As I speak to you, uh, at the last council meeting, up to two, uh, 74 licenses were pushed forward, okay? And the update I received from the secretary uh, yesterday confirmed that we have additional 200 and something that are ready, so you can imagine just the last council meeting held three weeks ago or thereabout. Between that period and now, we've already processed 200 and something that are ready for the officers of the Institute to endorse so we can give them to members. So we've really mastered the process and the complaints have drastically reduced, okay, to ensure that the Institute is also, you know, improving in its game to serve our members and serve them, you know, effectively and efficiently. Thank well you. done. Now we see ICANN is working. Uh, it's obvious that everything is intact. I mean, we're working. Um, there's a trajectory as we have um, proposed here. So, um, yes. sir, in, in very real occasions, I mean, we always talk about 
some clients or some companies expressing their displeasure at the quality of service or sometimes unethical conduct of our members. So my first question to you is, is there any disciplinary um, process for hearing practitioners and how can we, how can we, what's the process of uh, whistleblowing or say how can they report such um, bad behavior? Then the other one for me is, you know, given that Nigeria's grain listing is being granted by the Financial Action Tax Force, what do you think is the role of the Institute in ensuring that members do not aid and abet illicit financial flows, sir? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for combining uh, those two questions because they are related. If we if we follow our disciplinary processes, okay, that will drastically, re in fact, that will completely remove any risk of uh, any of our members being relisted or you know falling foul of the the special control unit on money laundering uh, processes. The Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, by the its Establishment Act has well-defined, tested, and trusted disciplinary procedures, okay? Uh, because we know, like I said earlier, we are humans and we run a human organization, an organization, you know, that is made up of human beings. We know that there could be reasons for members to, you know, play below the expected standard. It is not the ICANN standard, but it's, it's, it's a possibility. So what, the, the act empowers the institute to do is once we receive, you know, uh, um, a complaint, a complaint or a petition from anybody, the person could be a member, the person could be a company, the person could be a non-member from anybody whatsoever, a complaint backed up by a sworn affidavit, automatically the process, the, the you know, the disciplinary process has you know, started. That uh, petition will be forwarded to an ICANN uh, accountancy investigating panel. The role of that uh, panel is to investigate uh, the, the petition in all its ramifications. They will call the parties that are involved, listen to them, you know, and uh, uh, take their submissions, consider them sometimes, if the matters are weighty enough, those matters will be pushed forward to the accountant's disciplinary tribunal. The Institute has a disciplinary tribunal which is ranked you know, as a high court. So any appeal from that disciplinary tribunal can only go to an appeal court, not to a high court in Nigeria. It can only go to an appeal court. So if when the, when the investigating panel has finished its work, and maybe recommended for additional work by the disciplinary tribunal. That matter will be taken up by the disciplinary tribunal, after which it makes out sanctions or discharges the member accordingly. I, I'll give you a very uh, real case example. About two weeks ago, the Institute delisted a member, a, a formerly chartered accountant, from its register for life. It's not like a uh, uh, blacklisting or, or suspension, complete delisting and the person's name struck off the ICANN register. So until the person gets you know, a contrary verdict from a superior court, which is the appeal court, he is not a member of the institute. During that same tribunal sitting, another member was suspended for six months. That member was suspended for six months and this process is you know, we are followed diligently by the Institute because we do not joke with ethics. We do not joke with integrity. That is our watchword. That is our, in fact, that is, that is what we sell. Integrity is what we sell to the public, okay? So those two members were sanctioned and that has been the case over the years. No matter your level in the Institute, the, you cannot be higher than I can, which is all of us put together. So that Institute, that uh, process, has been tested and it's confirmed to be very, very effective. And that makes even the public, because I've had the, I've had the, the good fortune of chairing one of the panels, you discover the level of trust members of the public place in the Institute. Once they have an issue with any ICANN member and they could not settle those issues at their level, they will 
confidently approach the institute. They will just follow the process and approach the institute. And that matter will be handled without the institute taking sides or being biased in any form, because we know that what we are protecting is our image, our, our core value of accuracy and integrity. Very okay, true. so, so uh, similarly, um, at the recently concluded council retreat, when this uh, new presidential year began, we invited uh, the head of uh, uh, the Special Control Unit on Money Laundering to come and address the, the council at our retreat. And it was a very, very beneficial one for our members because it gave us an insight into the thinking of that agency of government. Presently, the, the, country, the country is gray listed, which is not too good for, 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 for our country because it, you know, uh, it also affects the perception of investors, you know, which is what we need in our country to grow our economy. Okay, so the partnership with SCUMO, what it will do is that the institute will now take it, you know, has now taken it upon itself to ensure that all members in practice comply with the requirements of that special control unit on money laundering to ensure that no member in practice who is an ICANN member is found wanting, you know, either in abating or aiding money laundering or any other uh, nefarious activity, which, you know, are not okay. normally, you know, traced to ICANN members. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, sir, your members are, members in practice are here and they have lots of questions uh, for you, but unfortunately we have just seven more minutes to go on the show. So we take them quickly. From Mr. Abel as saying, he said the practice monitoring initiative was suspended before because of its financial burden on the Institute. How has this issue been addressed? Just in a minute, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Chief Ebel is uh, a former deputy registrar of the Institute, so he understands the Institute in and out. It was suspended because of the huge financial implications, but the council, in its wisdom, has compared the cost of, you know, they say that if you think that education is costly, try ignorance, try illiteracy. So that's the, the comparison the Institute has made. The huge cost of running those practice monitoring and review versus the cost of damage to professional practice by members that are not reviewed. And the Institute has decided, the Council of the Institute has decided to spend that money to ensure that the quality that ICANN is known for is sustained. So we are not looking at money now. We are not looking at cost. What we are looking at is quality. It will be costly. It's already costly, but the Institute will bear it. And we are not going to transfer it to members because the institute is a non-profit making organization. So it's going to be borne by the institute and the quality that we want to see from all our members in practice will be delivered. That's all that matters to the governing council of ICANN. Thank you. Interesting, thank you so much, sir. So another question from Chiofilos Dada. He says, what is, what is the fate of members that had earlier gone through the 36 months or more training before this new rule without earlier applying to ICANN, will they have to start all over again, sir? No, God forbid. God forbid. We are human beings. We are not, uh, we are not animals. Okay? So we, we presently have such instances. And uh, though we are not encouraging people to keep bringing those applications, because we already have our cutoff line, because uh, we, 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 we are very serious with this, and we know it's in the best interest of our institute. But what we do at the professional practice uh, committee level is to collate all those existing challenges and move them to the council with a request for waiver, okay? But we already have our, our timeline, and we also examine those cases on their individual merit. So if there is no blanket application for cases like this. We presently, even from Enugu here, we, we have people uh, instances where we even write people, we call people that are in UK to affirm or confirm whatever uh, uh, submission we've received from members, just to be sure that nobody is taking the institute for a ride. But we handle those cases on the individual merit, and I can assure you that anybody that proves his or her case beyond reasonable doubt will you know, have that request for waiver from the committee to the council. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have another question uh, uh, 
uh, from uh, Ghani Walao, and he's saying that what is the position of ICANN on members that earlier applied and make payment for the mutual agreement between ICANN and CITN? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I want to thank our brother Ghani. Okay, so um, I wouldn't, because this uh, request, as a committee, we've moved forward our report to the council, and I wouldn't want to kind of uh, put the council on the hotspot, but we've made a recommendation to council. Uh, fortunately, we now have a new communication um, uh, process in the Institute. Immediately after every council meeting, key decisions affecting all members of the Institute, including those in practice, will be communicated to the members. So I just want Mr. Ganyu to keep, you know, uh, uh, stay tuned with the Institute. Very soon he will get uh, clarity on this matter. But uh, mm -hmm. we know that the uh, CITN is a sister professional body of ICANN, also began in the council chambers of ICANN, just like the Financial Reporting Council. So we have no issues and we, we the council will take its decision when, the, when it meets and will communicate to members accordingly. Thank you. Thank you very much for that response, sir. That is well taken. And lastly, ICANN is always open to ideas that would advance the growth of our members, the accountancy profession, yes. and the Nigerian business environment at large. Sir, yes. what is your suggestion on filling knowledge gaps to address emerging issues in professional practice? Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Um, the, the, the Institute has you know, its own processes to ensure that all members compulsory really fill knowledge gaps. We call it the Mandatory Continuing Professional Development Program. Every chartered accountant is expected to attend a certain number of uh, uh, training programs annually, okay? But besides that, for members in practice, we also have the Small and Medium Practices Help Desk, which provides technical uh, support to small and medium practitioners, because those, those of us in, in small and medium practices um, do not have the kind of support the big four have. So the Institute being aware of that uh, development has set up a small and medium practices help desk to provide that kind of technical support to ensure that the knowledge gap is abridged, you know, is, you know, uh, is closed, you know, as frequently as possible. Also, the Institute uh, uh, is also doing uh, seminars seminars on all topical issues relating to members and their interest. I am aware that very soon there will be one on from the IT committee of the Institute on AI, that's the artificial intelligence and its implications for, for chartered accountants, how we can take full advantage. Even for the forthcoming uh, 53rd Annual Accountants Conference, we also have such kind of relevant topics, you know, that will upgrade the knowledge of members and keep them abreast of developments. The Institute is looking at taking full advantage of, you know, imagine uh, uh, issues in practice like uh, data science, cloud, cloud computing, and all those kind of uh, these things to improve the skills of members to ensure that members can stay here in Nigeria and in foreign exchange all over the globe. We are already skilled, and it's just to apply the knowledge that we already have and make it more relevant for members so they can convert it to foreign exchange and help in building our economy. Wow. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Obviously, one hour is not enough to talk about the emerging issues in the professional practice. I want to say thank you so much to Mr. Jude for coming here today. Uh, we appreciate you. And we say next time, we'll definitely want to bring you on board because we have a lot of questions from our audience and also from our bank of questions. But thank you very much, sir. And have a good evening, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Tosin. Thank you, Mr. Jude. Thank you for coming on the show, sir. How quickly our 53rd AAC is coming. Our members should be aware of the 53rd Annual Accountant Conference coming up in Abuja between October 9th and October 13, 2023. The theme is Imperatives for Inclusive Development. And like we say, that is the largest gathering of third accountant in Nigeria. And if I say Africa, I will not be wrong. So please register now uh, before the, because the countdown for the AAC is uh, ongoing. And that will be the show for today. We want to say thank you all for being part of the show today. It will come your way uh, next week with another guest. 
and with another topic. And on behalf of the editorial team, we say thank you so much. I remain to Sinyakimomi saying thank you for watching and bye for now. And I remain.